Hey, what's up guys? Andy here, and today we're reviewing over The Abandoned Sacred Beast, Episode 4, titled March of the Behemoth. This was a good episode, but not in the sense of, like, a fighting one, because, you know, most of the time we get a good little fight scene out of the monsters. This was a good one because it ended nice. Uh, we got to see some, we got to see one of them who literally has done nothing wrong, but was just on a path to his dream, and kinda got screwed out of it because of a bridge, but then Hank made it come true. So, overall, really, really good episode in that sense, but... <clears throat> Well, that being said, you know, it's still, it's one of those things to where I'm still not sure about this anime. I feel like there's going to be a lot of build-up, uh, and after they kill all of them, he's going to have to fight Kane. And I think that's where this anime is really going to shine. When Kane and Elaine come back, it's going to be one of those things where it's like, this anime just got taken up to the next level. With that being said, though, guys, my voice kind of hurts, so I probably won't be getting too loud in this one. So, uh, bear with me on that one. That's why I didn't do the fairy tale review last night. But, uh, with that being said, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the video if y'all do enjoy it. And let's just jump right into this. They say you don't go home, but you can't stay here. So just to start us off, this is Arthur Alston, better known as Artie, and he was a very quiet man who really kind of kept to himself, and he was a drawer. He liked to draw, but he had one dream, which we find out about in this uh, episode. We get the intro and title card here, March of the Behemoth, and then we move right into them on a train. And apparently this train leads to the Iron Bridge, which was constructed after the war as a sign of peace. And it pretty much is like the holding grounds for all peace, because that's how people get back and forth from the north and the south. And the whole train stops, though, because Liza comes in and she's like, you gotta come with me now. The incarnate behemoth is moving much faster than expected, and we gotta stop it right now. And we find out that if he continues, he's on a certain path to crash right into the Iron Bridge. So they've got to stop him now or the whole bridge is going to go completely down. So we also find out here that anywhere he's wounded, it will grow back even harder than it was before. But Hank has a way he knows how to kill him. So they're fighting him here and... They're using cannonballs, and cannonballs have no effect on him at this point, because all the damage he took in the war. But Hank says the back of his joints, which were protected from attacks during the war, are his weakest spot. So he gets them, and he can't move. So he puts them down, and he can't really move. And Skull and Liza are talking here, and, you know, Skull's like, he hasn't even killed anybody. And she's like, yeah, Behemoth has always been avoiding populated cities and towns this whole time he's been moving. So he has some trace of humanity left in him. So, you know, that entices Skull to actually talk to him. And she figures out that, as she thought, you know, there's something up ahead that he really wants. Which, which is his dream, but we'll talk about that. The railway president, though, is not on board. He's like, the beast is still alive, why didn't you finish it off immediately? And they're like, there's protocol for this, we gotta do this, you know, this. And he's like, just drop dynamite on him. And then, you know, he storms off. And his lackeys do exactly what he said. He said, you know, we do it ourselves, we know how to use dynamite. <laughs> so then a bunch of, like, randos throw dynamite on him and he gets pissed. He just comes up and that has to entice the plan to go forward. So Hank is fighting him here. Well, kind of not pushing him back, not really fighting him. He can't do much to his body, but they end up setting off explosions <coughs> on him and to the side of him, and they pretty much blow his stomach up. And his intestines are all dragging, but he's still moving forward. And that's when, you know, Hank and Skull, Skull's on the bridge, Hank's down low. He's like, Artie, please stop. And that's when the final TNT goes off. And it doesn't hit him. It hits the back side of the mountain. Or, well, the valley. And it blows it up and you see the sun peeking through the ocean. And he just stops. He falls down dead here. 
he he was ready to go at that point and Hank reveals that he told him the only thing I want to do is see the ocean and Hank told him you know after the war's over there will be peace you can see the ocean and he's seen it but Hank said it still doesn't change the fact that I'm the one who killed him so overall great episode that was the end though guys as for episode four I still like episode three better but uh, this one was a good one, nonetheless. You know, I'm really glad that I actually gave this anime a shot. So, with that being said, gang, I'm going to go ahead and head out. I got a few plans today, but I'll catch y'all tomorrow. And I guess, you know, Black Clover, I mean, we got a whole big fight coming up here. So, I can't wait to see how that turns out. But, yeah. With that being said, gang, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch y'all next time. Take a Peace out. Right here, feeling like a sound gear. Driving towards the sun with a rose and a gun, feel the wind in my hair, going nowhere I swear.